What we're going to do today is take a walk, as it's a nice day, down um, the right-hand side of the mine. Um, it's very interesting to be able to see the mine from different angles, I think. There's a nice viewing point over there, and you can get the sort of scale of the operation, if you like. Techniques are good, because they can help us to, to sort of create a bit of an ordered thinking. You have to be spontaneous, but sometimes, you know, it's good to kind of pull it back and get, you know, put a little bit of discipline into your drawing. Um, or else it can get all very confusing and, you know, you can lose the, the, what you're trying to achieve. Now, these are very just quick sketches of the holy well. So you can see I've just picked out the basic shapes of the well here and some of the grasses and some of the ferns. And you can cross hatch <coughs> to build up tone. So they're very, very quick to work with. You have to not worry about getting it right, just try and concentrate on getting a nice flow going. And then there are also these chalks, chalk and Conte pencils, which you can work on top with. And they, they're quite nice for doing sort of broad colour. But also you can do, you can do sketch lines also. And you know the cross-hatching thing where you can build up tone by doing layers on top of each, each mm -hmm. other. You start with the pens, then work with the pencils, the Conte. And these are quite nice to work <coughs> with after. These are the watercolour crayons. Drawing helps us to look at things. I mean, okay, it's good to make a drawing, but remember, it's also good to draw in order to sort of focus on something and think about it and, and learn about it, observe it. Yeah? Okay. So we're doing both. We're going to go through here. Bit of off-roading, cross-country. And then, of course, you've got this, which is part of the ancient world. I mean, that's a pre-Christian site, this holy well. Yeah, I think we can stop here in 10 minutes. Um, you know, you don't need to draw the well, but, you know, there's some nice, all this uh, stonework's not interesting in there. and copy it as they are, mm. should I do that? You're saying you didn't want to be technical, so you didn't want to draw everything exactly? Yes. Is that what you were thinking? Yes. Just let your eye sort of be taken with what you can see, and then I'm kind of putting in so like there's another space there. A nice big dark shadow there. You're sort of building it up in, in layers, and there's one face of it, and there's another, if you like. I think one of the things that stops people drawing is that they don't know what to draw. They don't know where to start. What's great about the Heritage site is that there are lots of themes to pick up on, which help people get started. Because to draw, you have to be excited by something. You have to be interested in something. So it's a very stimulating environment. There's just so much. Yeah. But you can see the structure of the mill going yeah. down. And you can imagine yeah. like the water again, water being so important. It's flushing all the way down, down the mine. And, as we go down, you'll see there's all reservoirs everywhere that stored water, used water to for the slime, you know, washing the, the ore. Well, of course, the reason it looks like something out of a Western is that those images that we know from cowboy films, a lot of that was about mining, of course, those towns. 
were built for gold mining or so very similar structures. Now, this is quite an interesting area to do some sketching if you'd like to do a quick sketch. If you can find somewhere to sit, perhaps. Well, anything around this area that captures your interest. I did this by colouring lots of dark areas and then to create the image of the two people working in the airfield you had to use um, a special eraser and that actually removed the excess charcoal and then you'd highlight the individuals and um, from a distance it looks very good. This is very interesting, this is what I was trying to talk with Stephanie about, you know you've got a very light light way of looking at things you yeah. kind of and you you dart around the page so you, you just put a hint of something like a yeah. little flower there and a little blade of grass yeah. i think that's a difficult thing for some people because they get overwhelmed with so much detail they don't know which things uh, to pick yeah but you maybe yeah. you're so familiar with sketching that you've learned how to just pick the odd you know, you just p pick out the odd bit of granite yeah. to, to describe hopefully. the gra interpret hopefully. the granite and the hopefully. odd. Hopefully. <laughs> uh -huh. It works really well. Yeah. I had to draw, because that was part of my job. Didn't draw all I got, you know, like plans and mm -hmm. things I got. Didn't, didn't draw all the time. Mm -hmm. But at times I had to do that. And uh, But now you draw for pleasure. I draw and you for paint. pleasure now, yeah. 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 Try to paint, mm -hmm. paints a bit. Mm -hmm. Got you? more time on my hands. Any acrylic paints I do, yeah. The time goes oh, so quickly. That's all you exactly. We're just at the, the front of the tin floors, looking down towards the sea. I'll be there in uh, two minutes. What I want you to do is think about today, the walk that we did, and these photographs, because that's, that's what we're looking at, the watercourse. And I want you to use them to stimulate a kind of free flow of drawing. Think about what we did. Think about your pen drawings, the contour drawings that we talked about right at the beginning of the course. Looking at the flow of shapes, the, the, the gullies that have been forged by the water and how they create shapes in the landscape. Think about tones and reflections, so you can use your pastels to create them, building up lots of colour. You might take an interest in how, uh, you know, from one of the photographs of, of water, for instance, and how, how, how it's created by patches of colour and reflection. And once you get into the drawing, it'll all become clear. <laughs> we're, just, we're just using it as a kind of stimulation for free-flowing drawing, you know, to break, breaking out of the usual kind of four straight edges on, on your own private piece of paper. We're just allowing a broader area here, we're just breaking out of that a little bit. Be brave. He's going to join up that. Once they can draw, it's such a liberating experience. People say here all the time, you can get lost in drawing, hours go by. But it's a kind of, at the end of two hours, people feel satisfied, stimulated, uh, and, and happy. They don't feel it's been wasted time. They might have gone through some frustrations, but it's really a really constructive experience. Think about the walk and, and the big picture, the, the view that you had today, or all the little things that you noticed, the erosion, the rust, the colours, the wood, the pools, and just let that all kind of come into your mind and stimulate a sort of a desire to draw it. Sometimes we're afraid of spoiling things, aren't we? I think that's one of the things that can you know, make you very stuck when, you, when you're drawing. So if you get to that stage, just rip something up and rip it up, put it down on another bit of paper in a different way and try again.
see that there. Mm. It's that wall. Oh. It's going to be. I haven't got around to it yet. Just stand back for a sec, have a little look. Look at what you've done and then sort of look at the whole and then do a quick move around the table. Three places around. Okay? What we might have to do now is start moving the materials around as well to, so that we haven't got big white spaces in a particular area. And I think offering people a, a drawing course at the heritage site, it's both about drawing and engaging people with the heritage, I guess. A lot of the people who've come to the group, particularly of this generation, have realised they really want to learn a skill, they want to learn drawing. And I think perhaps it's something they feel was denied to them when they were younger. That's, that's emerged a lot, actually, working with this generation. There's something that they want to express. The, the temptation now will be to just fill in all the spaces with lots of this sort of stuff. So, first of all, I want you to take, take, take a material and draw some rhythmical lines from coming out of what you see that would link them together. Look for the shapes that are breaking out and going off to, to another place. Hmm? That's only showing because it's got the little bits of dust, or the red dust in there, isn't it? And you can see sort of lines, but you might want to use a different medium. Tell, tell me how you found that, doing that exercise. Did, did, did you find it useful using photographs, for instance, to, to work out from? Did that, that sort of stimulate you to draw? Mm -hmm. But not like copying from, it's not like copying from a photograph, it's a slightly different use of them, isn't it? It's like using it as a... A photograph was a basic start, wasn't it? You know, the start, mm. starting point. Yeah, starting point. And you created things from that. Yes. You know, skywards, landways, left to right, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it worked out very good. And having the pictures torn. Yeah, that, that square, helped. Yeah. Did that yeah. help? Yes. Yes. If, you, if they'd been square on yes. the page... No, you would, that would restrict you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we do need to finish up. Any more comments before we go? Thank you for another interesting day. Yes. <laughs> People come thinking they want to learn technically how to draw, and they think that I can come up with lots of techniques and teach them how to draw. Now, there is the teaching side and there is the technical side of drawing, but drawing is an emotional engagement as well. But drawing helps them to engage with their own memories. Obviously, walking around the heritage site also, we're talking about the memories left over by an industry and the natural heritage of the area. But that's a kind of way into people's own personal um, experiences too. And I think getting people to look and observe and draw helps them to engage with those memories more. And then the memory feeds into the drawing because it helps people to look more closely at things. I think it just helps I think drawing just helps people to engage more fully in life. I've always been able to, to uh, sketch and draw, but uh, uh, a lot of it I put down to my old art master, at Charlie McCarthy, at Penzance County Grammar School for Boys, way back in 46, 47, 48. He made me do it. You know? Saved my life drawing. Did I went you? to see to the Outward Bound Sea School in Aberdovey uh, in 1950 and then with Alfred Holtz from Liverpool to the Far East, Australia, South Africa and so on, Mediterranean. On the blue funnel boats, I used to go into the funnel, they had a door and you could draw with your finger in the dust and I did that and then I joined another one, one day, the Autolycus. My other ship was the Antilicus. And they, oh, you're from her, she's the one with the art gallery in the funnel. <laughs> oh, is it really? Yes. He said, they're bloody good too. He said, I said, yeah, well, I did them. <laughs> mm. And then I come up here on this course with you, and uh, it's very, very interesting indeed what they're trying to do. Um, these drawing from memories and uh, so on, you know. Um, 
We've it's really, really good. This was the first day that I arrived at Beaver. They said to do something from memory of what you saw on the way here. And it's a, I was on the road called North Road, looking across at Carnconidgic, St. Just, the church, the Methodist chapel, down over the moors, Silly Isles in the distance. February 05, that was. That again was mm. taken partly from an old photograph with the drawing group in Giver, looking across from mm. Biscazzo to Levant and the stamps and Giver headgear and so on. What I noticed about you, Harry, that you were almost able to sketch the landscape totally from memory because you must have observed it so long uh, and so hard over I the years. I love the place. Born yeah. and bred Cornishman. I love mm. the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the bridge at Nanchero, where the, when I was a boy the, the people would hang their sheets on the bushes to dry and uh, there was an air raid. We were coming home from the cinema and two or three of us went in under the arch there. We went in there out the way until the siren no. went again. We were all right, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a bridge in Kinijic Valley and Lower Basian Mine, the road, goes up to Basian Hamlet with the count house and the manager's house. Mm -hmm. it's, I haven't painted it yet, but uh, it was a rough sketch. So you do the, the line drawings first, first, and then you take them and home? Then, and... Yeah, sometimes I do them when I'm there. Mm -hmm. This is Wheel Dray, when the road from the valley goes up and out on the way to Batalic, the 11th of the 7th. That mine was flooded, and wheel holes broke into it underground and drowned 19, and they never ever got them out, they're still in there. Mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed coming over here, and two or three times we've been out, and we've seen the mines, and we've been underground. What a place to work in with the levels of the ground, you know, you're either going uphill or down on a slope. It must be very hard. In the morning, we went all through the process of the tinning industry. In the afternoon we went out and picked out a piece that we could see. It didn't a very good drawing, but um, the light was coming through that there. Um, and it all, all these shapes um, fascinated me. Start right away and, and afford to go to, if you can, for a term or two to the art school and get you started. I did try books, but uh, I didn't get all that far, but, um, but don't be afraid, get out and go in there. There's plenty of classes in the art school and they're very good. I didn't think I could draw anything at all at first, but now I like working on big paper. Started right away with big lines. You use loose of here of that white piece of paper. <laughs> you look at it sometimes and you think, oh, it don't even start. But uh, you know, you've got to be bold, make bold lines. <laughs> but um, it's given me great um, satisfaction. I can um, sit down and have an evening and. Uh, Telly isn't particularly interesting to me, so I can sit down for a couple of hours in the evening and lose myself in in the art. I think I've improved a little bit since I started, but I mean, I'm no, uh, I don't hope to do a masterpiece now.